Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Indonesia. We're continuing our series of explorations into piano producing regions all around the world. Indonesia is a fascinating one because this is a country that literally had no industry prior to the 1970s. And then you had three gigantic Asian companies come in, plop factories and poof, now Indonesia is a powerhouse. So we're gonna talk about how that happened and where things are today. If it's the first time that you have joined us here on the channel, we really appreciate if you hit that subscribe and notification bell. And of course, come back for more, comment, participate, join the community. Without further ado, let's jump right in to the Indonesian piano industry right away. When it comes to piano producing regions, Indonesia is an interesting one to take a look at. Because unlike Germany or the rest of Western Europe or Eastern Europe or Japan or the United States uh, or even China, Indonesia was created literally out of thin air by large, at that point, large multinational corporations that were seeking lower cost manufacturing uh, locations exclusively for export. There was no domestic Indonesian piano market before Yamaha landed and set up shop. There certainly is a long tradition of instrument making in Indonesia, and Indonesia has quickly developed over the last 30 years into a major manufacturing hub for a wide variety of industry. Uh, you've got quite a technically educated uh, workforce. Um, you have a fairly westernized uh, way of doing business in Indonesia. English is widely spoken in Indonesia. So uh, it has been a, um, a quite a fruitful place for a lot of Western nations and Asian companies as well to move into as a source of lower cost but still um, highly skilled labor. So Yamaha came into the picture and opened up shop first in 1974. Uh, they quickly established uh, you know, wood conditioning facilities, uh, got the factory, certainly uh, figured out the fact uh, that with very, very damp and humid conditions, they were going to have to uh, take climate control even within the factory itself into uh, consideration. Uh, but Yamaha has been successfully exporting out of that factory uh, for uh, coming on 40 years. Uh, currently in North America, if you're looking at a Yamaha uh, from Indonesia, you're gonna be looking at their B series upright, their B1, 2, and 3, uh, or their uh, GB1 um, grand piano. Uh, it's generally been the same approach with Kawai as well. Now Kawai moved in significantly later than Yamaha and has a much smaller footprint in Indonesia. Um, the difference in export numbers from uh, Yamaha and Kauai out of Indonesia uh, is substantial. It's almost like 10 to 1. Um, Kauai uh, opened up a, a much smaller factory in 2001 uh, versus what Yamaha has been building uh, since 1974. Uh, so Kauai of the three, third being Samic, uh, is really kind of, I guess, the the more boutique type of shop, although quality control and, and general um, output, uh, quality output levels from all three factories uh, really aren't uh, that different. Kauai as well uh, puts out their basic baby grand, uh, their GL10 in Indonesia. Uh, they also output a couple of their upright pianos, the K15, which is still available in, in many uh, markets, is Indonesian produced. Uh, the K200 is Indonesian produced. Um, and uh, in the United States, the GL20 is now also Indonesian produced. Samic moved into Indonesia uh, in the early 90s, 1992, 1993. They kind of got their factory set up. Originally, it was uh, designed to produce uh, components and parts uh, for the Korean operation, but they quickly uh, changed gears and um, really started to shift a lot of their production over to uh, Indonesia. Uh, and in terms of their output, it sits about halfway between where Kauai and Yamaha is. So uh, Samic uh, certainly producing a very, very large number of pianos being exported out of their Indonesian 
factory. Now the approach at these three factories had been very, very different. Not so much in terms of uh, manufacturing quality, uh, but the product lineups uh, and how the companies are using uh, these factories support their global uh, global uh, product uh, mixes. So uh, with Yamaha, uh, it is exclusively producing Yamaha branded product, uh, and as I said, uh, their basic upright line and their basic uh, baby grand. For Kauai, they are uh, using it to produce a Kauai branded product. Uh, there are also a couple of Boston models being produced at the Kauai factory uh, on behalf of Steinway. Uh, on the SAMIC side, they're using that uh, manufacturing plant to produce a wide range of brands. Uh, you have Kanabis uh, being produced there. You have Kohler and Campbell's being produced there. Uh, I believe Story and Clark uh, is a brand uh, that's, it's, that's produced in Indonesia uh, right now. Uh, the, uh, some of these Zyler uh, brands uh, from SAMIC are produced there. SAMIC as a brand itself uh, is produced there. There are also a couple of Boston models being produced uh, on behalf of Steinway. So uh, pretty well um, the entire portfolio of SAMIC brands has pianos being produced out of the Indonesian uh, factory. Now of the three factories, uh, the SAMIC one, interestingly enough, has the highest rated piano uh, that's currently coming out in Indonesia. And when I say rated, uh, certainly I don't mean uh, my personal opinion, um, referencing a resource that we often uh, look to uh, for, uh, you know, for good impartial uh, commentary on the industry, pianobuyer.com uh, is, is a resource that we, we frequently read and, and stay up to date and certainly have a lot of respect for its predecessor, the piano book, uh, Barry Larry Fine. Uh, and from a reputational standpoint, or as they call it, uh, industry positioning, so not by price, but really you know, by musical regard, uh, the Seiler uh, ES line uh, is, is currently uh, produced primarily uh, in Indonesia, um, and then has some finishing done off in Germany, and uh, that piano uh, is, is kind of considered uh, to be in the same league as, say, a W. Hoffman Vision series, great instruments. They also produce the ED Seiler, uh, pianos um, out of there, uh, which um, is the highest rated uh, exclusively Indonesian made instrument. Kind of an interesting approach where it's, it's really like a replica of what uh, Zeiler is doing in Germany. So that's pretty well what is happening in Indonesia piano wise. Um, no domestic uh, organic industry really that existed beforehand. And then you have the three largest piano companies in the world all move in in separate decades, the 70s for Yamaha, the 90s for Samic, and the early 2000s for Kauai, and kind of overnight uh, turn on the lights and suddenly Indonesia has a piano manufacturing industry. Uh, these instruments continue to improve uh, in quality uh, and I would say have kind of developed more quickly uh, than a lot of the Chinese factories that have actually been open uh, for longer. Um, a good reason for that, uh, you know, people often talk about the fact that it's English speaking and, uh, you know, the, the political systems are a little more aligned. I think uh, really a big part of that is, is the fact that you have Japanese labor uh, that is co, or, or sorry, uh, like, cross-training, let's call it, with the Indonesian labor. So I know when Kauai opened up in 2001, they really touted it as their Japanese factory in Indonesia. Uh, and I know the promotional videos that Yamaha came out with when they uh, were really cranking up their Indonesian production um, is, don't think about country of origin, but think about company of origin. Uh, was their slogan. So really focused on the fact that these uh, companies uh, based in Japan and Korea, uh, in the case of SAMIC, were exporting and, and transplanting a lot of uh, their uh, labor forces, institutional knowledge, uh, training practices, management practices, and instantly having them up and running uh, in Indonesia. And that is likely the biggest reason why you've seen uh, Indonesian uh, go from like zero to hero uh, in a much shorter frame of time than you've seen, uh, say, China's domestic industry slowly start to evolve and probably a bit more of a natural or let's call it a historical uh, curve of improvement and growth. Now in terms of the touch and tone of an Indonesian piano, Something that uh, became a bit of a hallmark, and not necessarily in a good way, of a lot of Indonesian pianos was the fact that they were being produced by laminated soundboards or surface tension soundboards. So surface tension soundboard, in a nutshell, 
is a thick layer of spruce with uh, veneered uh, spruce on the top and bottom. Um, some people refer to it as plywood. Plywood is probably a bit of a harsh term, but it certainly is laminated. Uh, there are advantages to laminated soundboards. Uh, one of them is that it does not uh, crack and it's much less susceptible uh, to the fluctuations that can occur in wood because of humidity changing and, and uh, temperature changes. Uh, the downside is that it's not nearly as resonant as a solid piece of spruce. So uh, laminated, certainly stronger, um, but a little more resistant to that, uh, to that natural uh, resonance. Um, but if you are going to have a solid piece of spruce, obviously it needs to be uh, weathered properly, it needs to be uh, dried properly and fitted properly uh, so that it, it can uh, sustain some of those normal variations in humidity. And in the early stages of those Indonesian factories, that was a bit of a challenge, uh, certainly for the Yamaha and the Samic uh, Corporation. So a lot of those instruments came out with laminated soundboards. There is very much um, a, a limiting musical factor uh, when you're using a laminated soundboard. Compared to a solid spruce soundboard, uh, there's just much less resonance. The sustain tends to be a lot lower. Um, but as an upside, sometimes the tuning stability is actually a little bit better. As we you know, move into 2022, 2023, and beyond, as that wood conditioning has improved uh, and companies are able to dry the wood more effectively, more consistently, the climate control within the factories is really excellent at this point. You've got some pianos now uh, coming out with premium uh, soundboard material, uh, tapered, dried properly, and a lot of those soundboards, uh, if you were to just look at them on an isolated example, would be very difficult to distinguish uh, from, say, um, a lower to mid-range European uh, soundboard. A lot of times you're using uh, white spruce uh, with, with really tight grain count, uh, the, the wood's being dry properly, and you even got some pretty advanced uh, tapering techniques uh, being used. Again, I, I, the E.D. Seiler line uh, comes up with their membrator uh, approach, which really has a very specific routing around it. So not just out of Germany, but out of the Indonesian factory using it as well. Koi, of course, uh, using tapered soundboards on the K200 as well as GL10, both solid spruce and both coming out of their Indonesian factory. So, uh, you know, the wood processing, wood technology and conditioning, uh, definitely improving over the years out of all three uh, companies and all three of those factories. So what then is the main difference, say, between an Indonesian piano and a Japanese piano? Well, in my experience, this is the main difference. A Japanese piano, whether it comes from Yamaha or Kawai, straight out of the box is going to require very little additional prep by a dealer. An Indonesian piano, depending on its design, depending on its components and the company, um, may have quite a high musical potential, but might require some additional time with the technician in order to draw that musical potential out, either through um, you know, further voicing, uh, further regulation, uh, some of those higher level uh, concert technician type activities uh, that when performed get the extra five or ten percent out of an instrument. So there are some companies who have released special editions of pianos being made in Indonesia in which they're taking care of that and they're charging uh, the premium. Uh, Samic has probably experimented with this the most. Um, they had a heritage edition which essentially was just an Ed Seiler uh, with additional factory prep and the feedback on those heritage uh, series, uh, there weren't very many of them out there, was that these were absolutely fantastic instruments for the price point and really did compete um, quite appropriately with both Japanese and, and sort of uh, American uh, level product. Now, neither Kawai or Yamaha has really attempted to produce what I would consider a high-end product out of their Indonesian facility. And that's probably more for economics than anything. Both already maintain and continue to grow, develop, and innovate their Japanese uh, production facilities. And that is where they're able to produce their highest quality product. That's where they're able to command the highest price point. It doesn't really work in their favor to produce a piano that musically might actually compete with that if the goal is to maintain 
good profitability for their Japanese manufacturing. So it's unlikely that we're going to see Yamaha or Kawai really use their Indonesian uh, manufacturing uh, to produce anything except the lower third of their lineups. Whereas with Samic, uh, really there's nothing um, happening in Korea anymore. The, the activities are very, very limited. Pretty much their entire uh, you know, piano manufacturing operation uh, is confined to both Indonesia and now uh, Germany with the Zeiler plant. Uh, so the freedom to experiment uh, and push the quality uh, up is going to really rest with Samic that doesn't have those other kind of uh, corporate considerations. We will see what they continue to do, uh, but so far uh, what they have been doing with the Siler line of most uh, late has certainly been, uh, to me, uh, the most interesting. So thank you so much for watching this short dive into the Indonesian piano industry. Uh, really just three players in this whole space. Not that different than talking about Japan where we're really down to just two players, you know, Kawai and Yamaha. And of course, Indonesia kind of just an extension of that where we've got Kawai, Yamaha, and then the third player, Samic. If you found it informative or enjoyable, we would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so you can come back for future videos, continue to learn more and more about pianos, the piano industry, uh, and increasingly, maybe a few extra videos on uh, piano playing tips and other things musically related and surrounding the piano. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Mary Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.